Hi everybody, this is Dino Chris from Prehistoric Facts, and this is a special episode. As you can see here, uh, right in the background right here, this is actually the Paleo Lab uh, room in uh, University of Wisconsin River Falls, so I'm going to do the episode right here. And the special episode, we're going to do two dinosaurs this time, and it will be Baryonyx and Megaraptor. Now let's start with Baryonyx. Uh, Baryonyx, uh, the name in Greek or Latin means heavy claw, basically by what was the signature discovery of that of that dinosaur is its thumb, its gigantic thumb claw. It's found in Europe, basically in England, I believe in uh, Germany or France, and and there's a possibility that there has been some fossils that have been found in Africa, but that might be just uh, Suchomimus fossils. Um, it's actually in the early Cretaceous, around 125 million years ago. And it is actually 30 feet long, approximately weigh 2 tons. Now the diet of Baryonyx is actually very interesting. Even though it's a carnivore, but even though a lot of a lot of scientists believe that it is actually a fish eater, so it probably ate more fish than actually than like uh, like other dinosaurs or anything like that. But there's some fossil discoveries alike with Baryonyx. The stomach contents that actually was found in one Baryonyx fossil has actually found that there has been uh, baby dinosaur bones that are actually in there, a baby iguanodon. But we still really don't know whether or not that baby di that baby iguanodon uh, was was really um, a live prey item, or otherwise it was actually uh, like a, a like a baby uh, iguanodon that just got too close to uh, the river or something like that, and it died uh, with and it died by drowning or otherwise. Uh, or otherwise, um, it was killed by disease. You know that that's always that's always a factor, though, too. So, probably with Baryonyx, considering that is actually, uh, like, since that the skull is actually very crocodilian-like, uh, that it did actually eat fish more than actually killing all the dinosaurs, because its teeth are conical. They're very conical. So, in being in the Spinosaurid family, you have conical teeth. And the conical teeth are designed to actually grab and hang on to prey. Not really to slice and dice. Because if you have conical teeth, you do not need uh, to slice up your prey that way. And a good fish and a good way to catch fish with Baryonyx is with its is with its big is with its big claw that can actually that can actually be nearly nearly a foot in length which is amazing I mean it's th that claw is huge and the discovery was actually uh, in the 1980s when the, this dinosaur was actually discovered by I believe a by a British by a British geologist or a British um, uh, a geographer or something like that that was actually looking at the the um, geography of the landscape, uh, but even though uh, it was actually it was actually a very important discovery in in England uh, due to the fact that it is actually it is actually one of the largest uh, uh, carnivorous dinosaurs that was actually found there with a with a <clears throat> excuse me with a with a big claw in its hand, and so. It is a two-legged animal, and, you can, and a lot of Spinosaurus fans are a little bit, a lot of Spinosaurus uh, people are kind of upset with the with the design of Spinosaurus, considering that they say, well, look at Baryonyx, look at Suchomimus, they got longer legs than Spinosaurus. Why does Spinosaurus have small legs? Well, maybe it's because uh, if you're going to adapt to a semi-aquatic lifestyle, you need to actually use your legs more uh, to actually to actually paddle through the water, you know, kind of being like a like a like a duck or a crocodile. And so and you see crocodiles, they don't really have big limbs to actually support themselves to actually beat to actually like stand up out of the water. That's not what they're really designed for. And you see with 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 Suchomimus, they probably just probably stay near shore uh, a little bit more in terms of the rivers or lakes and possibly the sea, and actually catch fish that way. And so it probably actually did, probably did actually eat like the coelacanth and probably some other fishes as well that were around in the Cretaceous. And other dinosaurs that were around uh, Baryonyx at that time were were basically uh, dinosaurs uh, like Iguanodon. 
uh, some titanosaurs that were actually kind of evolving at, the, at that time, some other carnosaur, some other um, uh, dinosaurs that were actually another allosaurid type of dinosaurs, but it's, they were very rare uh, during the time of baryonyx. So probably baryonyx was was a solitary uh, animal, so it probably didn't need to actually be ne near any others. Uh, for that matter besides mating and so that probably would actually be the case for that and so in, ter in terms of how it got extinct basically once once the uh, once your environment probably started getting flooded basically like with the sea levels rising uh, during that during around that particular time your environment is gone and so basically you have no way to actually adapt to that kind of, and adapt to uh, a, a rising sea level so baryonyx actually suffered the same fate like spinosaurus did you were too much of a specialist you're a specialist and once you're a specialist you do not you, you can't adapt you don't really adapt to a, a, a changing environment like basically if you're base if you're actually just basically hunting prey near the shore of a river or a lake or or the sea and that and that environment is gone where do you go you know where do you go uh, to, to actually find your prey and also find uh, sources for water and all that kind of stuff so basically that's all probably what happened is basically the environment changed and basically baryonyx couldn't actually adapt to that to that kind of environment so you're actually basically left with a dinosaur that probably couldn't actually uh, couldn't actually adapt to that kind of to that kind of change so that's probably how it probably went extinct and the next dinosaur that we're actually going to talk about is Megaraptor and Megaraptor is one of the most highly debated uh, dinosaurs that is actually out there due to the fact that it is at due to the fact for a long time it was actually found by one it was actually one fossil one single bone that actually was actually uh, a, that actually caused a really a big stir on what this dinosaur was but anyway Megaraptor in Greek or Latin means giant thief hence Mega and Raptor named thief it's found in South America Originally found in Argentina, Lake Cretaceous, uh, 90 to 85 million years ago. It's 25 feet long and probably weighed one to two tons, and it is a carnivore. Now, with Megaraptor, when it was first discovered, it was basically a claw that was actually found, and some scientists thought this might have this this claw might have come from a really large dromaeosaurid, and so they probably thought that dromaeosaur that the largest dromaeosaur, Megaraptor probably was taller than Utah Raptor, longer than Utah Raptor, and heavier than Utah Raptor. Probably maybe a height of 10 feet tall and probably would have been over 20 feet long. And and so that would have been that would have been a scary thing to th to look at it. But it wasn't until the mid 2000s it was actually when scientists took a closer look at the claw and actually thought like this is not a drone and some site and most paleo and some paleontologists looked at it and said this is not a raptorial claw this is not a dromaeosauric claw because reasons why is because you see the claw is thicker around so it's not really a claw that is for slicing and dicing like like most dromaeosaurids with their killing claw on the foot and that was now was the reason why and that was believed to be thought it was a, a dromaeosaurid because of the shape of the claw not because of the curvature of the claw not really uh, based on like based on the width and also um, how the claw was actually made and so once scientists actually looked through the area where the megaraptor claw was found they did find some fossil bones basically some of the hand bone some of the arm bones some vertebrae uh, they didn't really find the skull uh, that much and so they didn't really find the skull so the skull is actually going to be highly debated um, and so now Megaraptor is actually considered to be a Carcharodontosaurid or otherwise uh, a Spinosaurid uh, somewhere around there so, but even though for but in the pet but in the past five years it was actually considered to be 
uh, a Spinosaurid, so it was actually uh, interesting to think about that. So it's still highly debated on what this dinosaur really is. And so, was it a cart? Was it was it a uh, like an Allosaurid type of dinosaur, or was it a Spinosaurid type of dinosaur? By looking at the claw that I've actually seen out of pictures and and all that and all that stuff, it does remind me of like spine of the Spinosaurus claw, Spinosaurus hand claws. And the fact that it actually kind of almost looks like a Spinosaurid uh, claw is because you see the curvature is really, really dr drives me that to that. And also, there's an indentation in the claw that actually support, kind of maybe supports the idea of that it's actually a Spinosaurid. Whether or not it's actually a Carcharodontosaurid or an Allosaurid, uh, I would actually say it would actually have to be on on whether we need to we need to find more about this dinosaur because that this has gone uh, really out of hand in terms of like um, what it really is. You see, it's still unknown what this dinosaur is. I'd, I'd say it's leaning towards more of a Spinosaurid, but even though it's still up in the air, it's still up in the air, it probably didn't really have that much of a sale. So it was probably like Baryonyx in a way, but even though it probably would have, uh, uh, pr but even though the claw is massive, it's really massive. And but even though I, but it's kind of at that at that point. But I do think it's a fish, a fishing kind of dinosaur. But even though we'll still have to see what the skull really looks like. Is it a Spinosaurid? Or is it uh, a Carcharodontosaurid? That's all that's probably going to come up to come up to that. In terms of the environment, of where in terms of the environment, in terms of other dinosaurs, of where actually what actually lived around, uh, probably some probably um, some 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 of the last Carcharodontosaurids were probably around at that time. So Giganotosaurus and Mapusaurus are probably near the end of, and around 90. We're ending at 90 million years ago. So basically. They got to they got to uh, interact with they probably did get to interact with Giganotosaurus and Mapusaurus for a little while, but Mapusaurus probably lived around for the last couple million years after 90 million years, uh, and then basically Megaraptor was actually the the other predatory dinosaur that was actually going to be around. But then the Abilisaurids came in, like like Carnotaurus. Carnotaurus didn't come around until uh, 85 million years ago, so that actually. Uh, has to do with a lot of how uh, maybe how it got extinct was basically the abilisaurids took over and so and probably the reasons why it got extinct reasons for it, its extinction is probably uh, probably due to the fact that it's problem that the environment changed and also the new predators the abilisaurids took over uh, the landscape and so the carcharodontosaurids uh, basically, I uh, didn't really have that much left uh, in terms of surviving uh, that much longer, because because of the fact of because basically once once the new predators came in with the new environment, uh, the prey actually changed. You know, the titanosaurs got smaller, and so that actually has to do with a lot, and so and probably that Carnotaurus was a more sturdier built. Uh, type of uh, dinosaur, it probably actually couldn't compete with um, our sturdy. That Megaraptor couldn't compete against uh, uh, a Carnotaur, uh, an ability sword like Carnotaurus. So probably that was one of the reasons why it probably got extinct. And basically, the prey just totally changed. And that the fact that the Titanosaurs had gotten smaller, and basically they didn't really know how to adjust to that. All right, that's it for now, and next week will be an answering questions episode, so if you got a question about dinosaurs or any other prehistoric life, feel free to email me at dinochris71 at gmail.com, or otherwise you can follow me on Twitter, or otherwise go on the Facebook page, uh, Prehistoric Facts with Dino Chris. Like the page, you can also can post your questions in the comments section on any Facebook post, and make sure to keep your questions short and to the point. That way, I can actually read them, and also I can understand what you're trying to, what you're trying to say. And also, uh, you can follow me on Twitter, at... C S G R A L L. That's my Twitter Twitter account. Follow me there, and I can actually, and I post pretty cool stuff there. And also, take care of the people around you. And also, for you younger people out there, make sure to listen to your parents, your teachers, and your guardians. So, it's the best one of each. You can have a good education. It's very important to have a good education. It's a really good education. You get a good job in the future. All right, that's it for now, and I'll see you guys next week.